video. Um, I'm going to go over some pickups that I made outside of the Midwest Gaming Classic and I'm going to go through what I picked up there and um, just kind of what my experience was like at the conference this past weekend. Um, so first thing I forgot to mention last week that I, with the um, uh, Waterloo, get, or Waterloo video game swap that was in town, um, I finally picked up the uh, uh, Genesis and uh, Super NES book. This is produced by the guys at uh, Retro Gamer Magazine, and I've been looking for this. I looked at every bookstore that I ever stopped at for the last three or four months trying to find this. Um, it was probably a very limited run here in Canada, and uh, once they were on, they, they were probably gone within a week. So I actually found this at the convention. It's got a $25 sticker price here in Canada, and uh, I got it for 20 bucks. Um, it's in pretty good shape. It looks like it was flipped through once. So to be honest, it's probably the favorite thing that I got from that uh, swap meet. Speaking of magazines, the day before I left for... Um, MGC, I got this in the mail. This is a uh, retro, the video game magazine. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's produced by the um, guy uh, SoCal Mike, who also runs Game Gavel, and he's on a podcast that I listen to, um, which is, of course, I um, Retro Gaming Roundup. Um, I've been listening to that for years. It's a sometimes six hour long podcasts on all retro gaming stuff, which is really cool. Anyways, he decided to put a magazine together and he's got a lot of great writers on board, a lot of former one-up IGN guys. Um, so it's it's a quality product. Um, I, the first issue was okay, or this is the first issue I have. This is actually technically the second issue. Um, it's, it's really nice to find something like this. Um, the only other option is Retro Gamer Magazine, which is out of the UK, and they're, they're gonna cost you, I think, 14 bucks a piece. So. Um, I would recommend getting a subscription to that. I'm pretty happy with it. There's uh, not a lot of choice these days when it comes to print magazines, and I still enjoy flipping through them. So, uh, I got this in the mail. Um, Best Buy was having a 25% off used game, so this was 10 bucks. I didn't have it in the collection yet. It's a fantastic game. I um, played it. I had like an R4 card on my DS that I played this on quite a bit. And it's uh, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars for the uh, DS. Also fantastic on the PSP. But uh, it originally came out for the DS and it was built for the DS. A lot of touchscreen stuff, like you can do uh, carjacking and stuff on the touchscreen, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of getting uncommon. I, I've never seen this actually in the wild, so I had to pick that up. It was 10 bucks, so I decided to pull the trigger on that. Um, driving home the other day on, or last Friday, I actually stumbled across my first garage sale of the season, uh, just down the street from my house. Um, I approached, I, uh, saw a couple 360 games on the table, which I actually forgot to grab. Uh, they had a copy of Dead Space 3 there that I should have picked up for five bucks, but I totally forgot after getting this. Um, so I just said, do you have any other older video game stuff? And I usually list, um... Uh, there was younger kids there, so I said um, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Sega Genesis, Game Boy. I usually try and mention a combination of those words. If it's an older couple, I'll say Atari. Just so when you say video games, it gives them an idea of what you're looking for, because it doesn't clue in until you say... you got to be more specific, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So anyways, uh, two, everything in here is really clean. Um, works fantastically. Two controllers the orange zapper, all the cords, uh, the RF switch, um, the really nice, now you're playing with power posters in there. I'm actually surprised the only thing not here is the box. Uh, another poster, manuals for the zapper and the uh, control deck. Uh, copy, really clean copy of Mario Duck Hunt with the um, uh, instructions and a really nice copy of Super Mario 3 in the box. Original price tag, $80 from Dutch Boy, which is a food chain here in Canada. 80 bucks. That's like hundred and probably $110 in today's dollars. And um, let's see here. And then the system, which like I said, is super clean. I've got a buddy that's actually looking for one and um, I didn't get it super cheap. I got it on a great deal. I paid 40 bucks. He wanted 60 originally. Um, he used the, these things are collectible, is the word he said. 
Um, and then after looking around, after he said that, I could tell that they were flea market sellers um, or antiquers. So they, you know, trying to bargain with them is much tougher because they've heard and seen it all. So 40 bucks, I'm pretty happy. I couldn't leave it there. Um, like I said, super clean. Okay, Midwest Gaming Classic uh, was fantastic. Everything went phenomenally. I left on uh, early Saturday morning and I was there by 12 o'clock in Milwaukee. Uh, did a couple rounds like I always do at the, at the uh, retail tent they had set up where all the tables were. Um, basically I just, I, I quickly, my, my thing is to get to the retail, quickly scan for stuff that I'm looking for. And like I've always said, there's only a handful of things that I'm willing to pay for. I didn't go there, uh, planning to buy a lot. I only had my carry on, so I couldn't bring a whole lot back. Uh, one of the things I was looking for that I didn't find was Resident Evil Gaiden. I'm still looking for that on the Game Boy Color. Um, I knocked Metal Gear Solid off my list, I think last year, but, uh, those two Game Boy games I had when I was a kid, well, probably in my early teens, actually, and uh, absolutely love those games, so I'm, I'm really trying to find Resident Evil Guide, and, um, and uh, rare, more rare Dreamcast stuff, which I really didn't see a lot of, and I was actually looking for a copy of just Parappa the Rapper on the PS1. I just watched the uh, Game Center CX episode of him playing through that, and it kind of got me into uh, seeking that one out. Um, so like I said, I showed up, did the retail run, tried to find all the hidden gems I was looking for. I was kind of unsuccessful. Let's see. Um, so I met a lot of fantastic YouTubers at the uh, convention. Um, I couldn't believe how nice everybody was. Uh, a couple people recognized me, came up and uh, introduced themselves to me, which is awesome. Always nice to meet uh, people who watch my page. Uh, the first two people I actually saw were... Um, Ed EDT1138 and his son Lance and they were actually with uh, Wooden Gamer who is um, subbed to my channel and mentioned he was going to be there so that worked out perfect um, I'm going to leave a link to everybody in, this, in the description to everybody's channel so f please go check out their channels if you don't know Ed already I'm sure, I'm sure most of you do but go over and give him a sub he's a fantastic guy uh, which was confirmed this weekend I spent a lot of time with him actually and uh, Wooden Gamer just a super nice guy um he, uh, what did he hook me up with here? I'll get into this, but he hooked me up with a, uh, this is a Dragon Quest Sentinel Starry Skies, um, what did I think, uh, Rocket Slime? Or Slime, something slime, I can't remember what they're called. Hat, so that'll go on the shelf, or maybe my son might be able to wear that. My head is obscenely large. So, uh, he gave me that, so, uh, thank you for that, Wooden Gamer. Um, go check out his channel, he does pickups, he's a huge, huge Atari fan, um, and we picked up some really cool stuff at the uh, at the swap. He kind of had dialed in what to look for. There was a lot of things that he picked up, and I was like, why didn't I think of that? Uh, he picked up some Vectrex overlays, which was genius. Like, that's kind of thing that uh, you'd, you'd find there, but not everybody would be looking for. I think he picked up ten of them. So, really, really smart move there. Um, speaking of Vectrex, the first thing I bought, uh, I was looking around. And I just. Scout, I try and scour every inch of these things. I go through multiple times just looking for little hidden gems. And I found a copy of the Vectrex Multicart. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many games are on this, but it's got a whole bunch of um, homebrews, all the original games that came out. Um, and they go for, I'm pretty sure, well over 100 bucks on uh, online. So I had looked them up quite a bit. Uh, this is probably a year or two ago. I was really into trying to get one of these. Um, I started talking to the guys and I just I said what you know what's the name of that what's the name of the guy that made this again because every time you see it online if you look up that checks multi card this guy's name is attached to it um, and the guy's like oh that's me and it, I looked down and his name Sean Kelly and then right there included in Sean Kelly's uh, Vectrex multi card is what you'll find online so that was really cool actually buying it from the guy who made them um, I'm pretty sure Ed bought one too I think so. Um, yeah, that was that was really cool, or kind of kind of funny story that I was just trying to remember the name, and the guy's like, "Oh yeah, that was me." So pretty pretty awesome. Uh, very happy to get that. I think I paid fifty bucks for it. So, um, I think here I wrote down. So, anyways, that day, um, I went out with uh, Ed and Wooden Gamer to Fazoli's, which we don't have here, uh, which was pretty good. I had pasta. 
it's, I'm just mentioning this because I went out to Fazoli's the second day and had the exact same thing. I like it so much. Um, so after that, went back to the convention for a bit, um, did some more shopping, played a whole ton of games. They had uh, pretty much every system you could possibly imagine set up. Massive arcade. Um, I played a ton of pinball games. I played some earlier in the day and realized I was really bad. I went back around 8 o'clock after I had a couple beers and uh, I realized that getting a couple beers in me made some, for some reason made me better at pinball. So I played as much pinball as I could. It was pretty busy, but you kind of just stand behind whoever's playing and then it's kind of, that's the kind of code, I guess, for um, them knowing that you want to get in next. So I, I probably played 20 different games. Um, I just don't get a chance to play many pinball games, so it was awesome just to be able to hop from one to another. I played X-Men, ACDC, Tron, uh, Star Trek. I could not get on South Park, which is one of the ones I really wanted to try because there was a group of four kids that didn't move from it for about an hour. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't want to say, hey kids, give me a chance kind of thing. I played uh, Tapper for the first time on a dedicated cabinet. Awesome, I would love to own that game. Um, so anyways, that night I met up with uh, another person who's a, I hate saying fan, it's so weird, um, who's subscribed to my YouTube channel and uh, my Facebook actually, I believe, and um, um, had a couple beers with him and his girlfriend, his name was Aaron and uh, Nicole, so shout out to them. Uh, I spent quite uh, a couple hours with them having a couple drinks, which was really awesome. We were watching the band, um, one that's called Beaker, anyways, it's kind of like nerd-centric rock and roll. Um, so that was really cool getting to spend time with them and uh, then after that the three of us went to an after party with um, uh, Retro Rewinder and Mary Guide Gamer who are two guys that also approached me um, and that were subbed to the channel um, who I've recently subbed to and uh, have a fantastic channel so they'll be in the description below. I actually saw quite a bit of the two of them for the next couple of days. Really, really nice guys. They invited us back to the room for kind of like an after party. They were playing a bunch of games and stuff in there. So we went over there and um, a whole bunch of YouTubers were there. Uh, Business17 were there, uh, Midwest Retro Gamers who I recently subbed to, um, a husband and wife team, really cool channel, check them out. Uh, the, Sur the Survival Review, Retro NES Hunter, Grimsy42 was there. Um, um, I can't really remember, I don't think anybody... Actually, I think five minutes after I left, Game 31 showed up. He was there, too. I didn't get a chance to meet him. Actually, Crow wasn't at the party, but Crow... I can't remember Crow. Was it Crow 111? He was there, too, and I actually really wanted to meet him, but I didn't just didn't get the chance. He was uh, busy talking to someone else. I didn't really want to butt in. Um, so, yeah, it was really cool meeting all of them. Um, anyways, I called it a night around 11 o'clock, so next day, um, picked up a couple more things. Uh... I picked up a Model 3 Sega Genesis. Uh, we just don't see these up in Canada. This one's in fantastic condition. Came with all the cords. You can see how tiny it is there. By the way, I get my cast off today. Hope well, it's coming off. I'm not sure if you're gonna X-ray and make sure everything's all healed, but I'm gonna beg for them not to put this cast back on. So this should be the last time you actually see this damn thing. And it's getting gross, so. Uh, anyways, Model 3 Sega Genesis with a uh, six-button controller. Proper power cord and proper AV cord, which is nice. The RCA cord. Uh, 30 bucks. I thought that was a really good deal. I was really happy with that for 30 bucks. Um, they had a box one there for 60. I probably could have got it for 50, hopefully. But um, like I said, I only have my carry-on, so I wouldn't be able to fit it in. Um, well, with that little after-party thing, uh, Retro Rewinder had a box of free stuff, just stuff that he didn't really want, and uh, picked, or picked up real cheap. So I picked up a copy of Rampage World Tour. It's one that I actually didn't have, but it looks like it fell in someone's toilet. It's all rusted, so hopefully I can bring that back to life. <clears throat> also picked up the box, just the, or I shouldn't say that, it's all complete except for the game, of uh, Mario Party 3. I haven't checked yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I have the game. It's either just... Um, uh, box like box only or it's in a really bad shape from what I remember and uh, actually he also gave me Death Trap Dungeon on the PS1 PS1 game I didn't have and then he gave me this cool actually I'm going to open this right now I've seen people pick these out of dumpsters in the states I haven't seen them up here though it's a uh, 
Call of Duty Ghosts Flag. Also from Retro Rewinder. Pretty cool, actually. I think I'll put that maybe with my posters in the uh, parts department there. So thank you to Retro Rewinder. Really, really nice guy. Um, actually, the next day... Real quick, another story. The next day, I went with uh, Retro Rewinder, Married Die Gamer, um, and uh, Ed, and uh, another YouTuber named Collecting Retro, who I had just met at lunch, and apparently he's got a complete NES set. Um, so I checked out a couple of his, his videos too. Uh, really great channel. Um, we went out for lunch, um, and then at Tifazoli's again, and I had the exact same things. I liked it so much. Um, then we went out and did some game hunting at a store... I, oh, it's slipping me now. Record heads or record, record something. You'll see it up here in my little uh, video. Um, anyways, fantastic retro store. The guy knew what he was talking about, which for me means I'm not buying anything because it's all going to be close to retail price. Um, ton of stuff, so a lot of really rare stuff. Um, some sealed games, uh, a lot of old box Atari stuff that Ed was right into. Um, so yeah, I didn't buy anything, but it was cool to kind of get out with those guys and spend some time with them and do a little bit of game hunting. Uh, the next pick up here, people around the convention were wearing these everywhere. They're uh, Mario cat ears from uh, Super Mario 3D World. I got green and blue. My son's probably wearing his upstairs right now. He loved it. And I actually picked up... Uh, where I don't have the other one here. That's too bad. It's a really cool Mario sticker star sticker book, which my son goes nuts for stickers. Uh, they were just on a table at one of the uh, in one of the rooms. When I uh, first signed in, they give you a, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but uh, kind of like a it's based just a sticker decal, and uh, you get a pen. I probably should have bought a shirt in hindsight. Uh, and then I also picked up there was a huge box full of um, sticker decals of uh, arcade, mostly arcade machines. So stuff like this. These ended up being like fifty cents each. I haven't decided. My first thought was to put them, kind of paste them collage style on the, uh, on my main arcade cabinet, but um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that. I just don't know how it's going to look. Uh, the original Donkey Kong there. Tapper. I was thinking about putting some of these ones around the bezel, but I just don't want it to look junky. Uh, Centipede, Galaxian, and the uh, Simpsons. So... That is it for the pickups. Like I said, it was fantastic meeting everybody. Um, another person that I didn't get a chance to meet, but I saw his card. I forgot to bring my business cards, but and it turned out that like almost all the YouTubers there had business cards. I felt kind of weird for making them, but it was actually kind of smart to uh, bring them there and hand them out. Um, my battery is dying. I got about. 10 seconds. Anyways, check out the original Game Boys channel. He was there. I didn't get a chance to meet him. Um, anyways, guys, that's it from uh, MGC. Stay tuned for another video. It's been a couple days. I've been so busy, but um, I'll probably post up my vlog uh, garage sale video part two before the weekend, hopefully. And uh, hopefully I'll be getting out garage selling this weekend. It's been pretty nice, so I should have some pickups from that too. But uh, as always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching, guys.